Hello everyone, welcome back to the Duchess of Unicorn, the YouTube channel. I appreciate you being here and today is Sunday. This may post tonight or it may post tomorrow for Monday's video. I'm not sure. Uh, I have a crazy week coming up um, so I could, could choose to post and upload and just maybe again record and not upload you know right away. I'm not sure yet. But I wanted to do this today because it's Sunday and it is a rest day. It's a day where we're supposed to just kind of chill out and, and you know, look to the home and family or just relax, right? Um, so thank you for being here. If you're new here, my channel focuses on Meghan Markle and Prince Harry as it, you know, as it pertains to the British royals coming over to America. I'm in America and I'm biracial myself. And I am definitely interested in what things she does and how she moves or manipulates the media. And of course, when she manipulates the media, she manipulates us. Now, of course, she has the information. She sends it off to the um, her press release people, her PR people, and they kind of spin it the way they believe and send it out as they think it's best suited for what brand she's building. And of course she's building a Meghan Markle brand within the British Royals. So I think it's exciting to, to look at and the full disclaimer is in the description box. So if you're interested in the disclaimer in full, go ahead to the description box. Basically it's just going to tell you I'm biracial. I'm a woman, United States based, and I share my own opinions with you on Make and Marvel News. So check out that little piece of information in the description. Okay, so I found this article and as you know, I usually don't share anything I don't agree with or I, it might be assaulting or it just doesn't spark me. Some things spark me for weird reasons. So if it doesn't spark you, you can move on. Uh, please remember to like. And if something does spark you, go ahead and think about sharing the link or embedding the video on like one of your social medias or with a friend or on Facebook. I'll, I'll take anything. Um, and it's totally free to subscribe. Meghan Markle's bid to win her UK tabloid privacy case without a high profile trial is hapless and hopeless. The, new, the Duchess of Sussex got an important win on the high court last week when she was granted permission to dis delay her case while the mail on Sunday by a round of nine months for confidential reasons. Crucially, she all, was also granted permission to apply in January to be given the victory in the high stakes lawsuit without a trial. Now that sounds really, wait a minute, permission to apply in January to be given victory? Okay, I didn't even know that was an option. If successful, the move would be a major coup and would remove the need for her to face a grilling from the newspaper's lawyers. Unfair, not, not really court, and for her father to give evidence against her. The case centers around a handwritten letter. You remember that letter where she wrote her father, you know, schooling him on, you know, how many times he's let her down and how many times her and Prince Harry have come to his rescue, but he has warded them off and said he doesn't want the help. You remember that long handwritten, supposedly beautifully articulated letter. Well, that letter was obviously shared with the media and she knew what her dad would do, right? Thomas Wackle about the breakdown of their relationship following the 2018 royal wedding. Not, didn't feel that royal after a while, but UK attorney Mark Stevens, who previously represented us, Julian Assange, told Newsweek if she fails to face, if she fails, she faces giving evidence under oath about whether she leaked the information in her private life to the authors of the biography Finding Freedom. The lawyer of Howard Kennedy said her application is hopeless and hapless. That battle failed. So they're already saying that she's going to fail because of that. Now, she's smarter than that, and she has attorneys working for her and people advising her on what things she can and cannot do and most likely will win. And sometimes they're wrong, but they do have an eye on this. She's not going to just do whatever, whatever. 
she's putting herself in this position where she has to accept the fact that the male on Sunday is trying, is saying, what male on Sunday is saying is true. Only if everything they're saying is true and they still lose, can what can, can she do it? So let me repeat that. Only if everything they're saying is true and they still lose, can she do it? That smacked me of an attempt to delay the case because I think she knows she's in a mess and she's been forced to, before that hearing, put forward the details of how she cooperated with the book directly or indirectly. She's going to have to expose all of that and she's going to have to give disclosure of her private electronic messages. Hmm. Summary judgments are awarded if the court believes one side in a case has an overwhelming prospect of success. We'll see today we learned something. The courts seem like they're fair and they're ruled properly, but there are lawful ways that you can get out of or bypass some things in terms of proving yourself innocent in court. So we learned that. Summary judgments are awarded if the court believes one side of the case has an overwhelming prospect of success. However, the Mail on Sunday's case was built around claims Megan intended her private letter to be made public and sent it as part of a PR strategy to get her point of view across without being seen to speak out publicly. I think that's not unfair. I think that should be something that people can exercise if they want, but not every single time you feel like saying something or you don't like what they're saying. However, the Mail on Sunday case is built around claims Megan intended her private letter to be made public and sent it as part of a PR strategy to get a point across. Megan disputes these allegations, but the newspaper will claim the court cannot rule on whether she is telling the truth without seeing her testify in court. Correct. In court filing last week, Mail on Sunday's lawyer said it would not be Megan's place to say the court should make final decisions on those factual issues based on her own evidence without her even providing any documentation to support the case. The newspaper wants Megan and five of her closest friends to submit private messages to the court as part of evidence in the case with, pros with the prospect that more embarrassing and illuminating details could emerge. Amber Melville Brown, media and reputation lawyer at Withers, told Newsweek she's already been successful with an application to put off the trial and therefore she got a little bit of time perhaps to try to get herself out of the mess. So how is she doing that? Well, she's brought an application for strikeout and summary judgment in related to every aspect of the claim. And why not? Frankly, it's looking to get out of it and avoid the horror show that would be a public trial. Well, that's kind of not a bad thing for those of us who would like the information or how she really is to kind of come forward. It is a risk worth taking. The risk is that you lose and you don't want to go into a trial having lost a hearing psychologically. The trial has been due to begin on January 11th with Megan and Harry flying to Britain in late December to quarantine for the two weeks beforehand. However, the date, the trial date adjoined with Megan's summary judgment hearing, not requiring her presence in person, she will no longer have to come to Britain this December. The Sussex source last night said a judge's summary judgment and strikeout application is a legal step that would be brought during proceedings if one party believes it has an overwhelmingly, it has to be overwhelmingly strong case. We do not believe that the defense, defense case has a chance of succeeding and do not believe there is a compelling reason for trial. This is very interesting. So what do you guys think? I'd love to know what you think. I feel like Megan's always getting out of everything. I feel like that she shouldn't. And I feel like we all need to kind of share our, you know, thoughts and kind of get that out to the world that that would be a little bit ridiculous if Meghan Markle was allowed to just expunge the whole thing just based on the application. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Will Meghan go to court? Is this about a baby? Is this all about a baby? And she's just using that to kind of see, you know, roll the dice and see where this court case takes her. Is it all going to be dismissed? Will she win?
And if she wins, what does that really mean? Because I'm not really sure. I just think she gives the winnings to, you know, the, the newspaper says they're sorry, they retract it, they have to tell the world it's not real, I'm sorry. They have to say I'm sorry, and then she gets, I guess, some money, and the money supposedly goes a certain amount to some kind of organizations, which are probably her own or her best friend or friend or what have you. All right, everybody. I have no idea, but I know that nothing is real anymore. Look at what's happening in the United States with Trump, and it's like they are censoring him all across all across all outlets. And it's funny because then you're able to see, just when you look online, you're able to see what organizations are part of the Democratic organization, who is involved in that. If you see an article that is pro-Trump, that's talking about the truth, about the court, about what Trump's thinking, doing, or saying, then you know that they are not part of the Democratic coup. They're not part of that whole organization, and they are actually either independent or owned by Trump or outside of the, the whole deal. So I scan the internet, and there's not a lot of that. So if you're a Trump person, let me know in the comments below by just saying Trump or whatever else you want to say. And if you're looking to have an answer for me, I will definitely scan the comments. Thank you so much, and stay strong, and stay blessed. And let me tell you something. If you're in the United States and Biden oversees Trump, there will be so many issues and we don't even know, you know, what to think, but we will hope for the best.